Hi, I'm Brian B. Bear with Bar YU, and I'm here with Dr. Clower. Today we're uh, repairing a water gap. I don't know what that is. So Barry, we're here in a field, and the sun's, uh, it's like, feels like almost, I don't know, 11 o'clock. Sun's hot, and, but you're talking about water gap. What, I don't know what that is, really. I don't know. A, a gap, I would say, is a space between this and that. Yep. What is that? What are we doing? Exactly. Much like that opening, so you'll have a visual. Uh, that gate right there. That, okay. That is a gate. Okay. It can also serve as a gap in the fence. And you can take that down and put it back up. Okay, versus a, a swinging gate. It's movable. And, right. Okay. Right. right. Instead of you a could have a swinging gate. gate there because you have corner posts. You do. That's the reason I brought up that gate, and it's there pretty handy to use as an example. Why didn't they put a swinging gate there? Okay, they bring plow. Mm. They they bring plows down here quite a bit to plow the land on the other side. Right. It's a little wider, okay, than what you would want to actually have a gate hanging off of one side or the other. Yeah. So you would either have to put double gates, like two 10-foot gates, or you can take, uh, uh, or maybe two 8-foot gates in that, that area there, or you can take bob wire and, and cedar posts like that make and make you a wire gate. This gate is not used very much at all. And so that way, they just make it and build it and make it look like the fence. Uh, not just for looks, but just for economical. I mean, that is the cheapest sure. way you could put a gate up. How much money is yes. in, that, in that particular not, gate not right there? Not much at all. If you've got a dollar a piece in the staves, uh, two, four, six bucks, and then you may have you may have fifteen dollars worth of wire there. You know, so bucks, less than twenty five dollars, yeah. you've got a you've got a fence, and it's probably stuff that was left over yeah. from somewhere else. Yeah. So, and then of course the the benefit of just having that there. Uh, cause that, that's what most of all your gates were, was just a gap in the fence. Okay. The situation we have back here behind us is considered a water gap. And the reason water gap gap, it's a gap in the land where the water runs. Okay. okay? So a low area where yes. water is going to be rushing through exactly. during the rainy season. Exactly. And what they have here is possibly when this was originally built, there was not that much water flow coming through here. Now we have. Either they've diverted a dam up back yeah. there, what, whatever. The main thing is, is a lot of water in a, in, a, in a fast time, you get a two, three inches of rain, it's rolling through yeah. here. And the trash, and what I mean by that, like limbs and not necessarily paper trash, but sometimes you'll see that, but old barrels, tubs, anything can come down through this, this uh, water flow and it picks that trash up and when it hits the fence, it wipes the fence out. Okay, water does a lot of damage, um, and so, sure. so as it's pushed uh, uh, that post that's floated in, it's taken out, and now since it has a hole that's broke through it, that's a little bit difficult to fix. Yeah, these cattle can come down here sniffing, smelling around, maybe to get a drink on the water that's standing on the other side, and it's low enough over here they can walk right through it and pass back and but forth. This is somebody else's property right here. This is the gotcha. uh, one man leases this place and has these cattle. This guy here, right, doesn't want them over here. Barry, uh, this this big post here, obviously, I would think would have been something to hold up the fence earlier. Right. Uh, but it had been washed and was was down, and there was a big hole yep. in here. Right. Um, how do you how do you fix something like this so yep. that it functions properly? Well, what we we would probably want to do is uh, go ahead and take this mm -hmm. this piece out of the scenario. Okay. The, the brush and the trash is going to be coming this way. So every time we have to come back down here and try to rebuild this thing, 
what I'm going to do is create a, a simple water gap to where we're going to have a post on each side and wire them together with a small piece of wire, okay, to where when the force of you or I or a cow pushing on it's not going to open it up most likely. Right. Um, but when the force of the water comes, it's going to break it loose, okay, yeah. whichever way the water comes from. But, but in this situation, we know it's coming from, from, uh, from the east over here, coming back, uh, or from the west, coming back to the east. So we're going to allow it to break loose. And that way we can, you can pull up down here without the fence truck. You know, you don't have to load up the fencing truck and come down here and rebuild. You will be able to have a, a couple of pieces of wire and we're gonna leave some extra wire on the fence when we get through. So you're saying you want this fence during a rainy season or a flood when a lot of water is bringing brush and everything else yep. in, instead of it getting stuck on a fence that's not gonna give, you're yes. gonna make its own semi permanent gate, exactly. meaning it's not permanent, yep. but it's going to give and actually yep. break? Break away. Yeah, it's, it's gonna a breakaway be a, fence. It's going to be a breakaway not gap. Not or yep. ruined, as we say in Tennessee, yep. but something you can just pick back up after the, the water recedes and that's, put it back together without correct. without having to redo an entire yes. fence. Because if this wire would not have broke, okay, if this wire would not have broke when this come through, like right. I have seen. Yes, this wire is snapped. Yes. And so if it doesn't break and there's enough pressure on it, it, it can take out your corner post, it, it can take out T post, and then you're down right. here rebuilding the whole fence to where if this is the area that is the problem, all we gotta do is come down here and fix the problem area. And usually when people say after a big rain, I gotta go check my gaps, I gotta go check my water gaps, right. that's the reason they go check them. If they're full of water, a cow's not gonna go swimming through it. Sure. Nine times out of 10. But, but uh, once it started receding two or three days later, I'm going to that gap, I'm going to that problem, and then I'd be able to get down here without too much trouble, pull the two posts back together and wire them up and gotcha. get out. And I'm not spending all day working on fence. So that's what we're gonna focus on right here. And it's just, in Texas, we call it a water gap. Water gap, so all right. Right now, what I'm gonna do is I have, instead of having Two sides I really have to get new wire for. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this wire is still good. Yeah. It has it's a little bit pliable and be able to use it. <clears throat> All the way to this point here. So I'm just gonna come up here and uh, cut these two because I'm gonna end up using them. And then we'll leave these two alone. But but we're gonna end up using these uh, to tie to our post. Okay. So I'm just gonna take a simple little pair of pliers. So you're gonna cut that existing fence right here. Yes. In the middle of, uh, well, it's the middle of the gap. Pretty much the middle of the gap, but also this way, I'm gonna put in one post on this side, okay? I'm using this wire to put in this post. Gotcha. We'll have to grab new wire to, to be able to extend over here to make up for what we're cutting out of. Right. So this is just gonna minimize my work. Uh, a little bit, and that's what we're all about. Okay. So, uh, you've cut one here, so you're going to yes, cut the next one. I'm going to cut the next one, right? There it goes. Good deal. We've just let that fall. We'll deal with that in a minute. Okay. Because uh, what we got to do is give us our area that we're pulling to. This side's where we're going to go. This wire, of course, is up above us. We're not going to yeah, be able to have to tie five to it. Feet or so. And so, we're not going to have to worry about it. Big thing about putting a T post in your water gap, uh, the, the problem with that. It helps catch trash. Yeah. Okay, so true. small rains bring in just a little bit of trash. No big deal, it didn't wipe out my water gap. The big problem is, is when you do get a big rain, then you have extra stuff that's just gonna really wipe it out. And so I like to take the T-post out of the, uh, of the scenario, especially when it's in the ground that soft. Yeah, really. We'll pitch it over out of the way. We may have to use it somewhere else. So right now, uh, I think the best part about this water gap, it's I'm not standing waist deep in water fixing it because I've had to do that before. Have you really? And the thing is in the shade. Yeah. So I mean we've got thing. it. Uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, slip right over here. I'm gonna get one of these cedar staves and uh, and our cedar post, and I am gonna take just exactly like if I was. Uh, Tying off around a post in a inline fence. 
and I'm going to wrap that just as tight and close as I can to it right there and I've got you here to help me uh-huh need me to push uh, on this to hold that okay all right now once I get this done because most of the time when you have to go ride your horses and cowboy everybody in the world wants to come help you okay but when you say hey what are you doing today Barry well I'm gonna go fix a water gap oh I'm busy so they don't want to show up <laughs> they don't want to help you and so what uh, what we can do right here and take a piece of this wire that we know is that we're not using right here snap off about two feet of that or so yep. and I would take Okay, just gonna wire this to the top of this post, like that. All right, and then I'm gonna come up here. And wrap it around that and side. And wrap it around right here. Now this is something that we will remove when we're through. Because <clears throat> if I don't, and this gets hung up and the water washes it out, it can pull this wire down or pull That's the true. corner post down. But right now, it's, you're just doing that to keep it in place. Yes, right now, this is just something I thought of that, you know, hey, man, I, you know, I really kind of need out here that by yourself, you standing need here yeah. or I'm out here with a guy that all he wants to do is hold the camera and talk. <laughs> well, then we can do that, you know, but no, <laughs> it works out pretty good. I'm going to try to stay in line here uh, yeah, with the next, the next wire. All there right. It is. And, uh, a lot of times you might think, hey, I'm going to get my stretchers out and I'm going to pull this wire just as tight as I can get it. Is that a good idea? That is a great idea if you have a brand new fence and it's, uh -huh. it's really good. If we go to pulling on this fence that might have was built back in the early 1900s and... Uh, You'll be breaking some things. We will be having likely. to replace, yes. It, it, so as we tighten fence, and I'm going to show you how we're going to tighten this fence, but... Right now we're working on this water gap, and so that's what we want to try to stay focused on and get it. But it's just uh, kind of got that stuck in the mud. You're sticking the mud. Okay. We've got that. I'm going to come back and tighten that up a little more. Now we've got one more wire. One more on the bottom. On the bottom. And... Uh, Try not to let that come up there and get you in the eye. That's mm -hmm. something that you always kind of are watching for. Okay. Now, a lot of times you want to build something that doesn't break. Build something that can't be destroyed. When you're water gapping in a situation like this, you're basically building something that you want it to come apart. It's meant to kind of break When the pressure away. hits, Yes, because this will be the easiest, simplest fix versus coming down here and replacing the whole fence because it got pressure here. And it's gonna go find the weakest part to get through. And, and if we make this the weakest part, then this is, the, this is our target area every time we, we work. Right now, I've gotta grab some new wire. And, uh, and what we wanna do, we're gonna take that post that, that's like this one and we're gonna get it right side by side. I see you're gonna put another post right next to this one. I'm gonna tie them together and then we're gonna put the new wire, snub it up good, Got and then it. we'll be good. Awesome. All right, I'm gonna grab some wire. I'm gonna go ahead and get me a little extra here. Okay. For that. And I believe we're gonna take this one. I'm gonna go ahead and start with our top one. What I like to do is just kind of keep it in the flow and not bend it like this old wire. Some people like to make a loop and bend it all the way back. That will break on you. If, you t if you're dealing with old wire or new wire, that old wire, okay, it's still going the same direction. I never broke it back over itself or bent it backwards. Right. All right. Now I'm gonna hold this side. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with the new wire. All right. Then, because if you ever get a loop or a break in that, when it gets ice cold, that thing is, it's, this wire is going to shrink up. When it gets hot, it expands. And so if we've got a kink in it that we put in it and it, free, and it gets cold and freezes, that can break your wire. So that's the reason I use this method of tying wire together versus putting a loop in it. 
and that's just trial and error and having to go back and fix it. Mm. And so I said, hey, if I can fix it right the first time, we can uh, we can make it work. And uh, okay, some people have wondered what those holes are for. This is what those holes are for. Taking and pulling that right on around. Mm -hmm. Just pull that right on around like that. So now, if you have a pair of pliers like that, you know what those holes are for. And you might go get you a pair. And if they were willing to sponsor us, we would advertise for them. Good call. And in their pocket right there. Now, what I would like to do is get my grab this guy uh, here. little fella right there. Okay. Right next to the other one. Yep. It's pretty cool. And it don't have to be just spot on next to it, but you don't want an animal or something being able to stick their head through it. Okay. So that's going to be pretty close to where I want it. All right. So what I'm going to do is kind of make that that spot my mark back in the limbs i'm going to go ahead and take the old baling wire and remember we have this tied up to the top that's helping us hold if, right. if we're you know by ourselves working on this okay i've got my top about where i want it and i am going to take a little bit of this galvanized wire and I am going to get the bottom tied. Okay. We might crank down on it a little more in a little bit, but we want to go ahead and get that just about, which we're real fortunate that this is next to a, a, uh, a place that we can kind of pull a little extra pressure on. All right. Now, you kind of see where this is going? Right. All yeah. right, it's kind of coming together, huh? And we may add some wire to this, uh, but we mainly want to give it to where the cattle are walking down the fence and nothing changes. It still looks like the fence, so I'm not gonna try to go through it. Uh, so far, we've been working on this fence. They know we got feed in that truck and those cattle would like to come over here, but they're not trying to. So what we want to make this fence look as much like the, the natural boundary that's here and so that's why a lot of times we do our water gaps this way now we've got some old wire right here there's several breaks in it and it's been wrapped pretty uh, uh pretty fragile it believes the word of the day so uh we're gonna go ahead and take that off i'm gonna just go right back to that twist that i talked about mm -hmm. We want to twist it as close together as we can. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and rush right on around that so we can kind of get on with it. But I'll come back and tighten that up a little more. Uh, so there again, I'm just lining up this wire with our next one in line. Now, something that you can do, and I want you to watch pretty close right here. I'm, instead of putting my pliers on this side and bringing it over, mm -hmm. watch what I'm going to do. I learned this. The older gentleman showed me. And guess what? Now I'm an older gentleman, so I better show you. I'm going to come over here on this side. And as I bring it over, as I bring it, see how hard that is? Mm -hmm. As I bring it over, look what it did to that wire. It uh -huh. tightened it up. Tightens it up. And that's just by moving your pliers less than a half of an inch. And then as I twist, I can kind of just gradually, as that gets tighter, see? Now I didn't right. do it on that old wire, and the reason being is because it'll break on you. But this new wire can handle just a little bit more stress. So that's what, uh, just wanted to kind of show you that quick thought on tightening that wire up. I try my best to keep everything pointed. We're on this side, of, like my loose ends that I haven't tied up yet. I want them pointed away from me. 
because I'm gonna get busy moving around here. Next thing you know, I've stuck it in my eye uh -huh. or my ear or my rear. Well, that'd be hard because I ain't got one. But uh, <laughs> we've got basically one more on this side, okay? And so we're yep. gonna have to add one. But so that tells me I'm gonna need probably an extra three to four foot. And we're gonna shut her down right there. Okay. So now, same basic old thing. We're basically setting up the post to fail. <laughs> we don't right, want right. we don't want our wire to fail. So uh, gloves are important in this when you get your old hands ripping up. Looks like it. We've pretty much got this looking like the rest of the fence to the livestock. And uh, and so I've got two two goals here. Uh, of course, first of all, the guy being happy with the job that is done. I know the guy, so we want to make sure he's happy. And uh, and then we want to keep the cattle out. And so if it looks pretty much like the fence that he has, and it keeps the cattle out, he's going to be happy. And one more. Now there's a fine line right here when you're twisting wire. Have you ever tightened up a bolt with a ratchet or a wrench mm -hmm. and you take it a little too far and it breaks? Dad taught me, he says, I said, well, how do you know when you're supposed to quit turning? He said, right before it breaks. Now, we want to step back a little bit from it and I want to look the best I can Okay, do we see an area that we think would be a problem? Yes, I do. I still see some holes that a cow could actually walk up and stick her head through. Mm -hmm. But we don't need any more wire coming right or left. You know, going, going north or south, whichever right. way. We can, now we can take those pieces that we have left over. Those little pieces. And we can come up and down. But up close, it doesn't look like there's even a hole in the fence. Right. It looks like, man, we've done a good job. When we step back over there, it looks like, oh, we got to fix that. I'll have a double shot. Okay. All right. Now, all I'm doing is just, and, and not making it just too awful tight, not putting quite a kink in that, but there's no stress or pressure on it like there would be on these wires. And so, yeah, and I'm gonna put that like that right there. Okay. Just like that. We gotta and keep so, these cows gotta from keep getting over here. From over gotta here. repair the fence. We gotta plug the hole. I can do that. Uh, okay. A plus. We'll go Coming back. right up, baby. We'll just get right after it. I am your guy. Good deal. This may be one job I don't have to do. We take all we got here. We just start finding stuff and lean it up against there. I can already see a post right there. You got sticks. You got bark. Here's a big stick. Look at this. Look at that. What's wrong with this, Barry? Why yeah, can't you use this? Good. You bet. How much do you think they paid for these? I, I don't know. You find but, big uh, sticks. It's been a long time. You got time. little sticks. Yeah. That little stick may be hooked to a bigger stick. But you got it. You're Stronger the man. Stronger you think. Looks like you got it figured big out. Big little pieces of bark like this. Yeah, go ahead. I think you could probably plug the hole with that. You can do it. Yeah. And you just lean all this up against here. Is there a way to do it without all the mud? I've got to come into here and do this. Oh, okay. Hi. So you're going to get on another man's property and trespass without asking him. Okay, this is, yeah, this is going even better than I thought. Can we have to fix gun. it from this side without touching over here? Well, you can. Nobody's watching. Just go it's like ahead. like dodgeball? Yes. <laughs> look, look. Those cows are going to come through here if they yeah. see a, a this. Okay. What, what about the hole? Here. It's really muddy over here. Now you're getting a log in the middle of the hole. I don't know, Brian, that you really understand. Look, 
I think the reason the water gap's in the situation it is, is the last guy fixed it the way you're trying to These fix cows, this. These cows, I'm gonna use the hole my boot just dug. There you go. And I'm gonna grab here, push down into the mud. Yep. Oh, I think that's great. You bet. Now, I, I What's think, wrong with that? I think possibly the next cow that comes through there will be laying there dead like the coyote because that log's gonna fall on her head. That's what, what I think. So maybe get out of there and we can fix it right. <laughs> what do you think about that? Come on, wouldn't this work? So now, basically, Brian, we talked about being the water gap. It looks like the fence is part of the fence. If you are not really knowing what this is, you say, boy, they got that tied up good. Water comes through here, trash comes through here, and it hits this, okay? It's going to have to knock out the weakest part of it. And so when it hits, it is going to pretty much take out that piece of wire mm. and this piece of wire right here. Yep. And the water is going to drop that over there, this over here. It's just going to open like a gate. So when we come up, you saw what we were looking at when we first came up. Yeah. Okay. We were looking at a hole that needed a major work job. Now we walk up and we say, hmm, wonder if my wire's still here. That's going to be my first thought. I which, wonder if there's When some I wire leave, we're here. going to leave a roll of that wire tied to the fence. Okay, so if I'm horseback or if right. I'm down here, uh, say Greg's down here plowing, the man that owns the place, he's plowing and he sees that problem, he can stop, he can come over here and simply take this piece right here. And this one right here. This piece right here. Now you saw how long it took me to rebuild this. Right. Okay, if we wouldn't have put this in here, it would have still took me just as long to tie all this together. All right, then I'm just gonna come back in here and I'm gonna take and put this wire right here. Mm. All right, and this wire will be right here. Right. Okay, now first of all, an animal does not have a reason to come up here and mash on it because it looks just like the fence. It has barbed wire on it. Actually, it's gonna be a darker, closer, tighter post. They're probably not gonna to wanna to come to this area because there's not a hole here anymore. All right? right. And so as we step back away from that, it took me maybe, if I wouldn't have been talking to you, it took me maybe seven seconds, you know, to pick that up, wire it together it. and walk off and you're back on the, back on the job. So uh, that's basically, and it does not matter if that gap is, is three to eight foot like this one, or if it's 38 foot. We've got some that, that go across the length of, not the Brazos River, but much like the Brazos, huh. all the little creeks and streams, Turkey Creek and stuff like that, that runs into them, they can be as much as 50 feet across. A lot of times what we'll do is the side that we have access to, okay? The side that, that I could drive up on that creek and not have to cross it. I tie a lariat rope onto that top of that thing, okay? And, and just leave it strung out there, just strung out. And to where right. I can get across there and get a hold of that lariat rope on my horse. And, and I can take that rope, dally up on my, on my saddle horn and drag that thing back across the creek. It may not be in the middle like this one is because it's accessible from both sides. So I will want, if I'm gonna tie it to that side, I put my weak wire over here on the side that I'm gonna That's tie it. up. My strong side would be over to the side that I actually can't get to, huh. you know. And so just kind of little common sense stuff like that. Yep. Having to swim across uh, muddy, murky water, fighting off water moxkins and, and snapping turtles, uh, you, you kind of get the grip. You don't want to be sure. in that situation. And so, uh, and there's, uh, there's one that I have actually has a log on the, or uh, uh, a knob on the end of it that when it's usually laying over on the creek, I can use my own rope, pitch it on there, and drag it back across. Drag so, back. yeah, so it's just kind of- Clever. What works for us uh, in this area? It'll work for anybody anywhere in any area, but, but it, it sure works for us in this area. We get uh, probably 30 inches, maybe a year uh, of rain. I know others east of us get 60 and, and 80. Some of them in Florida is getting a whole lot more than that right now in and, and the east coast. But, but the main thing is, is this, this will pretty much work anywhere uh, at any time. And there's That's our great. water gap. That's fixed. a water gap. Yes, it's sir. fixed. Well, 
started out not knowing what a water gap is. So. You, I've I've seen I've seen the gap. All right. Did you learn anything? What well, maybe? Let's recap what you learned. It's it's a clever uh, a clever fix. And um, first of all, you clear the area, get things out of the right. way that may have washed in, get them out of the way. Right. Uh, maybe use them somewhere else, but they might just be a lot of trash out of the way. Right. Uh, you make sure you have a couple posts or something to use as your main post that you put together in the middle. Yes. Um, tie on to, if you need to, existing barbed wire that's there. Correct. Um, use the old with the new. Yep. Um, being careful not to tweak too hard on the old or put too much tension on an old fence right. because it would probably pull something down if it's been there a long, long time. Correct. And you put your post in. If you're working by yourself, you need to make sure and adhere that to yeah. each other while yeah, you're working. That works out good. And put the barbed wire around, joining, making it look like a natural fence that's been yeah. there a long, long time, yeah. so that the, the cattle, the livestock, don't. It doesn't look any different than any other fence yeah, it's for not them. Inviting them to go through a hole. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you put your post in. Barbed wire connects to those. Yeah. And then with two pieces of wire at the top and bottom. Yes. Um, just loop them, yeah. twist it once, maybe twice. Yeah, maybe twice, because water's going to bring a, a pretty heavy force, right. Right. right? but just to keep an animal or livestock from knocking it Top open. and bottom, yeah. um, so that when the water does come through, it's going to take out It breaks water. two pieces of thin wire, thin wire versus seven pieces of bob wire. And you leave some extra wire Yes, exactly. at the place, That's so that thinking. at the you most bet. inconvenient time, you have convenient wire to fix it. There after a flood or after some heavy rain. Yep, that's right. That's awesome. pretty good. Well, congratulations. Thanks. Water Gap in 101. Water Gap in 101. Yes, we are ready to go. I am Brian B. Barrett, Bar by You. Can you make a little more noise? That's great. Oh, we're actually